he's the old lion who's coming back into the cage to mix it up with the new lion. But at the same time, it's like, but I'm the strongest. And it, it <laughs> <laughs> Which he does do in the show. In the show. I do. Yeah. Right. No, that's his yeah. voice. That's that's voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah. a like, bold performance yeah. choice, but yeah, he does yeah, it the yeah. whole time. It is. Yeah. Really but I'm the strongest. Yeah. I remember yeah. seeing yeah. the first time he did that, I was like, <laughs> so brave. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Eric Kripke, showrunner of The Boys. I am here with the cast, and we are talking season three. There's something wrong with Homelander. There's something broken. He's lost his fucking mind. Love, mommy, daddy, and I'm I don't think you can ever fully be prepared for uh, what's gonna happen to you on this show. <laughs> I think you kind of get a script, go, what the f and then go, okay. How do you prepare for this? How do you prepare? Yeah, yeah it's like, uh, you, you, you're kind of like on a roller coaster and you just gotta like Buckle. throw your hands up and scream and like maybe puke out the side or something. Oh, what a great idea for <laughs> season four. <laughs> yeah. Since season two, it's been a year, about a year, and for Kimiko and Frenchie, they're actually on a very high note in season three. They have run across town figuring out what Kimiko likes to do. He's really showing her uh, the joys of life, which she hasn't really explored before. Um, she has hobbies, she goes dancing. I put this in there, but she um, she she eats across town, she goes to all the restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> the boss doesn't know this. <laughs> this is, this is the Kimiko this is my, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, It might be half me, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so she's really starting on a high note um, at the beginning of season three, and um, quickly things turn in true boys fashion. But um, yeah, I think season three is mainly about her finding her true, her true self and her womanhood and writing her own story. Nice. Trying to, trying to, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Deeper. 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 Deeper
the lovely Giancarlo Esposito, which we're very fortunate to have. God, thanks for casting him, by the way. I get yeah. to do all my scenes with him. It's great. Well, you know, I, I wanted to take a chance on an unknown. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you nailed it. I don't know. Nailed it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, to yeah. Be good. Who knew? Oh. Newsflash. Giancarlo yeah. Esposito is yeah. a good actor. Yeah, he's got. <laughs> Spoiler. He's got some chops, it turns out. So, yeah. yeah, but we had a lot of fun this season. Um, and I, unfortunately, she's not, she's not here, but Starlight and Homie have some good uh, interaction this season as well. So it's a really fun season. And uh, yeah, it just, I'm so excited for it to come out. Yeah. Feels like we haven't yeah. had the show out for so long, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 We are the one and only true justice. Guess this means we're breaking up. Nazi bitch. I mean, it was so friggin' cool and <laughs> hilarious and like, what a good sport, by the way. Yeah, totally. You yeah. know, because it's like, yeah, because yeah, it's like we sort of like Dawn of the Seven kind of takes the piss <laughs> on, out of uh, kind of. <laughs> In that it's an exact one-to-one -one facsimile. <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah. so like, you know, release the Bork cut and everything. So for him to like jump in and we know somebody who knows him, someone who works with us is friends with him. And I think that's part of how it came wow. about is, is she gave him the heads up. And he thought it was hilarious. He just thinks the whole thing is so funny. And he watches the show. He's a fan of the show. So boom, boom. Done. What'd you guys think? I thought it was Love. great. Oh, you agree. <laughs> I, it's I love hilarious. It. I was offended I love by it. it. No, do you know what? <laughs> I was angry. No, the, <laughs> <laughs> you weren't in it. They I was. That's why I was mad. Oh, okay. I, I was angry. Yeah. so angry. It was cool. Our, our show, uh, we always get compared to those shows, and I think media, God bless you, uh, is always trying to get something out of us that we don't like. We those, hate them. Those movies, <laughs> or we don't like DC. We don't, we don't, but it's not that at all. Like, without them, there is no. Us. So I think, mm -hmm. you, you, you know, it's just a little nod to that to me as well. It was like, see, there's no beef. We love each other. Yes, it's kind of cool. I mean, as the greatest work in the Western canon, we've found <laughs> a certain latitude <laughs> to, um, yeah, no, I think, I think we just want to do what we do. And um, I have to say, Amazon has been remarkable about giving us very few limits anyway. I mean, I, I can't say that like in the earlier seasons they were really on our and then suddenly weren't. But it's just more of like, it's, I think it's more of like validation. It's just like a good attaboy of, of people seem to be responding to what we're doing. And so it gives us sort of the, the ability to keep doing it. Um, like what that says about the public and how deeply sick they are um, <laughs> is, is for other psychiatrists to write books about. But I'm just grateful that everyone is as perverted as they are. You know what, though, as well, on that note, on that note. On the note of perversion. On the note of perversion, <laughs> Here's what I did last out. night. Um, do you want to see, <laughs> see something? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my um, goodness. <laughs> Jesus. Who wants to see this new monkey bug? <laughs> Come on. 10 a.m., guys. So, you know, I think one of the reasons that we get away with what we get away with is that, and I always use the same example, forgive me for being boring, but but whenever there's one of those more shocking moments, whenever there's one of, there's one of those jaw drop moments, uh, it's always anchored in story and narrative. So my favorite, one of my favorite scenes in the entire show thus far is the deep riding in on whaleback uh, just to, to try, you know, to, and beaching a whale and, you know, standing up on the whale like an idiot. Such a good actor. No offense. Though. It was really good acting. Cool. It was Thanks. really good acting. <laughs> Home, so. Homelander will mention you in his, his book. No, but truly, you know, that is insane. And I, I remember reading it going, oh, cool, we're, we're, we've gone too far already. <laughs> and uh, I, I, that, was my, that was my baptism and just, just let these guys do what they do because the end result was one great but also what's actually happening is is the character is desperately trying to get back in the seven so it's actually driven by the needs of the character and i think it's not just gratuitous silliness it's always anchored in yeah. the needs and wants of the character and i think that's why we can kind of get away with some of what what you guys cook up that's very intentional in the room i mean i get yeah. you know i get pitched crazy all day as you can imagine and if i can't sit and tell you with a straight face why we're doing it outside of Right. And it has to be more than because it's shocking. Yeah. Like the, the, the rule is always you can't tell the story without it. If you can't tell the story without it, we can do it. But if it's just there, 
then um, we tend, I tend to, um, you know, toss, toss them out. Yeah. Hey, oh. We've been on the straight and narrow all year. No killing soups, no drinking. Even follow Hugh Campbell's orders without strangling him. Now you're just being cruel. Or maybe you're not such an asshole. People have superpowers. But real power isn't this. It's the ability to bend the world to your will. All, all the absurdist stuff that the deep, you know, goes through. I mean, Kripke will laugh, but he'll, he'll be like, you, know, you just got to, he, you know, he'll, he'll show me and he'll just remember, like, and this, this is insane, but you're in a real, I guess not, not, you know, not giving away any spoilers, you're in a real, you know, relationship here. Or this is a very, you know, this is, you know, with the utmost sincerity and nuance and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it makes it much more funny and, uh, and it's, it is absurd, but yeah. He did say, have you seen The Octopus Teacher? And I was like, I know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> was that how it was pitched to you? The thing about, I yeah. mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. When, you know, again, no spoilers for the season, but like the thing about Octopus Teacher, <laughs> when I watched it, <laughs> weird. I like watched that whole thing. I knew it. And, I'm, and, and the whole time I'm like, is he gonna <laughs> that octopus? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're missing the word again. <laughs> and then, and then, like, we just, uh, the writer's room, we just kept laughing about that documentary. It's a great documentary. It is. It's amazing. It's very it's 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 relationship, yeah. but it's, it's weirdly awesome. sexual. Super, <laughs> it's super intimate. Like, a man in a cephalopod is like, wow, that's that's a lot. That's a lot. It is. Did you watch it? Did you watch she it? She was such a tender. For research? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I already seen it. Oh, okay. Oh, great team brought it in. She oh, was such yeah. a tender animal. <laughs> My God, this guy's gonna <laughs> this. <laughs> We're way too immature for like <laughs> beautiful uh, award-winning documentaries. <laughs> Everyone no, looks such yeah. not for this couch. If I could swap storylines with someone in season three, um, I don't know, probably Jensen. Yeah, Soldier Boy, that'd be fun, right? Mm. Do some action. I thought I was gonna be able to do action as the deep, but uh, he's just in a therapist's office and sort of gets his little, his little booties wet. <laughs> That's it. Uh, love you guys. Love you guys. The gloves are off. I thought we could fight Vought the right way, but we can't. It's all rigged. We have to do it your way. We're all we've got. It's up to us. I think I have something. Maybe we can use it to blow Homelander's f***ing brains out. What's this? Makes you a soup for 24 hours. Chase Crawford had to take off because he hates Jensen Ackles and we can't put them in the same room together. Uh, yeah. So welcome Jensen Ackles. Oh, thanks, yeah, no, that was a fun contract uh, negotiation. <laughs> Your writer, <laughs> right. writer was can't be in the same room. It's like the deal we made, he drove a hard bargain, but it was, it was. That was it. No brown M&Ms and can't be in the same room with Chase <laughs> no Crawford. No Chase Crawford. Yeah. No Chase Crawford. You're like Crawford. crossing the streams. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's like too much CW for one room. Right. <laughs> yeah, you can't put Chase and Jensen in the same room. Too much CW, oh, and then you know. Line. Oh my God! <laughs> Only one broadsword at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Over yeah. This on it. And then Tom Welling shows up, and the whole fucking place. I think uh, the deep scenes are really funny, and so I would love to be in his scenes, but I don't want to be the deep. Mm. You know? uh, yeah. I feel like he's mm. his. Uh, he's had a hard. Couple seasons. Uh, who would I switch with? Any of the deeps love interests, which are uh, marine <gasps> life. No marine wow. life. Oh, no, marine okay. life. Okay, all right. No, um, uh, Kamiko. Yeah. 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 Really. <laughs> this is yes, the girl. Me. This is the boy. <laughs> um, no, Guys, we got to for I, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna sit here and you're gonna listen to this conversation. No, yeah, no, we want it, we want it. Kamiko, for sure, wow, for sure. Thank you. Oh, cute. Yeah, that was. Uh, you know what, I would, uh, if I could choose anyone else's storyline for this season. I actually, I love where, um, where Butcher goes this season. Um, I mean, I love yeah. on-screen crossing swords with, with Carl anyway. I've been wanting to work with him for so long, so I love doing those scenes, but. <laughs> I'd oh, can we just grow up? Please, <laughs> please, Eric. <laughs> oh man, I, I, look, no, but he, he goes to some really dark places this season and uh, I've seen uh, uh, the lion's share of the season this year and for, for a start, you know, Carl, 
absolutely crushed it this season. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's always great, but this season in particular, I, he just found new levels with this guy. And um, so it's pretty stupid, really, to say that I'd want to do that. But but no, I think it's uh, maybe the point is that it, it's really inspiring to see what he's done this season. Kripke, who would you change stories yeah. with? Hmm. Uh, literally anyone who isn't running this show. <laughs> 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 I'll do it. I could do it. I could do it. I'll do it. All right, right. You're, 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 uh, you're. If I could uh, 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 swap storylines, it's a toss-up for me between uh, Huey and Frenchie. The, the the reactionary aspect of those characters, uh, I think, is just so fun. Yeah, to to pay uh, uh, COVID Jack Quaid a compliment. COVID, COVID Jack. Jack Quaid. <laughs> like. Someone taught me a long time ago, and Jack knows it instinctually, uh, someone taught me a long time ago that um, comedy is about the reaction, not the line. And he is just a stone cold master at the reaction. He's, a, he's an assassin <laughs> yeah, when it comes and to comedy. I can't, and it's not so much that we particularly direct him to do a particular moment, he's just always yeah. knows to do it. And so I can't tell you how many times we've had a joke go flat in the cut, and then the answer is always like, well, go to Jack. And then you go to Jack, and then Jack is just does a thing, and then suddenly the line works, yeah. mm. and um, it's a, it's a gift. Christ, soldier boy. Oh. I was told to beef up, and so I worked out like a, a, a madman. And then I get to set, and Anthony's like, "Why didn't you just tell him to add muscles to the suit, bro?" <laughs> <laughs> and it just thought it just deflated me. <laughs> just crushed me. All that effort and it was for really nothing. I didn't need to do it. The the physical preparation was uh was something that I have never done before. But, you know, it it, it, I think it helped me get there mentally. And then from a mental preparation, just watching the show and understanding the tone, uh, but then also having some really good conversations with this guy and, and letting him kind of, kind of pave my lane that I needed to go. Because there's a lot of really incredible characters in the show and, and, um, and they, all, they all work beautifully together. I, I certainly didn't want to come in and, and mess that up. I wanted to, to, to add to it as much as I could. And so, yeah, really, really understanding where where this character needed to be and where he needed to go um, was something that uh, that we talked about, and hopefully I did. And you look—you did it. You did. You do look really good with your shirt off. Thank you. Which is the most <laughs> important thing. Not now, <laughs> but then <laughs> when <Yeah>. filming. <laughs> Eric was was didn't take a lot of his time to just think. Hmm. What can I make him do that I could never make him do on Supernatural? <laughs> and put it in the script and said. Here you go, I know that I'm supposed to say right now, no, 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 it was really true to the character and the tone, but, he, <laughs> but he's right. <laughs> I mean, it's, it was pretty much like, I mean, but for real though, for, to a certain extent, like we could never swear on Supernatural, right? Like there's so many things that we wanted to do on Supernatural. <laughs> swear. This show makes so much do. more sense now. Yeah. <laughs> So many things that we wanted to do in terms of like some of the, you know, because Supernatural is a horror movie, but we couldn't really show the horror that much or we couldn't swear or, you know, have giant, you know, 10 foot high <laughs> So <Yeah>. restrictive. <laughs> so restrictive. So restrictive. Yeah. So, restrictive. <laughs> so it was like a pleasure to be able to, it was a pleasure to be able to like put him through all those, uh, all those paces. He did call me at one point and he was like, bro, yeah, I, I can't, I can't do this. You're asking me to do something that I like cannot do. And I got to be like the producer from like Boogie Nights and I was like, you with my cigar, like you suit up and you get on set. If you want that cocaine, you're gonna do the scene. And, and he was like, okay. okay. Now, All right, I'll, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Uh, we did re revise it to make him uh, more, more comfortable. Um, but that's also one of the downsides of us being friends for so long and having like, you know, having such a comfort with each other because like any of the other actors call me with something, I'm like, okay, we're gonna stop down, we're gonna figure this out. This is a safe space. You need to be comfortable, right? He calls me with it, I go, <laughs> not up. Yeah, it's like, ha ha, that's hilarious. No, but real, get the out there and do it. <laughs> Constant, now we all know that we're just- We're just being- Oh, okay. Oh, 
okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm listening to you and taking your concerns seriously. That's the difference. The whole point of what we do is that no one should have that kind of power. For once, I leveled the f***ing play field. I show people the real me. <laughs> I mean, they f***ing love me. By the heroes and the I think for, for Homie, he's got a pretty one-track mind when it comes to who and what he believes he, I mean, he thinks he's a, a god, basically, um, with that nagging, annoying understanding deep down that he is a human. So there's a constant struggle within the character. Um, I mean, the power dynamics internally are always sort of seesawing between that. He's pretty pretty screwed up screwed up chap, but ultimately, you know, he really does want to be not just the, the strongest man in the world, but the most dominant in every way. He wants to be a god. And I think, uh, yeah, I mean, it's probably, yeah, homie's pro he's probably the most obvious one of the lot, you know, he just wants ultimate power. He's already been corrupted by having that power for so long. Uh, it gets taken away from him at the end of season two, very much. And then season three is about regaining that power and... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I think the effect, Ladies, yeah, power, I think the effect of power like really depends on uh, uh, the intention of the person, like where the power lies, whether they're good natured or, or bad natured. And this is a, a show with pretty gray characters, morally gray characters. Um, Newman this season has a, a, a pretty intense struggle for kind of control and maintaining uh, her situation whilst Got moving forward, and and uh, I think she attempts to be pretty strategic in uh, in gaining what she needs, and uh, she's a she's a very duplicitous person. She wears many faces, and uh, kind of has a knack for manipulation or trying to like gauge how she should act based on the interaction. So like how she interacts with Homelander is vastly different to how she interacts with Huey, and so uh, uh, that's how she kind of attempts to get her power with people is is seeing what their desires and needs are and catering to that to further her own desires and needs but um she's kind of thrusted into some pretty desperate situations this season so that attempt to maintain control in her life kind of goes off the rails a bit so she's very much struggling in that regard and, and teetering the line of like a good decision versus a necessary decision yeah i think kimiko really struggles with having superpowers, um, especially because it was sort of forced upon her and it wasn't by choice. And so she has to go through the process of figuring out whether is our powers right for her? Like, does she want the power or has it been forced upon her? And does the fact that she have these powers um, weaponize her? And uh, put, does it put her in a position that she doesn't want to be in, per se? Um, and especially in season three, she's going through the journey of um, finding what's true to herself and uh, whether she even wants it at all. Yeah, I very much agree with the, with, with the idea that, that uh, power doesn't corrupt people, that, that power just reveals uh, how corrupt a person actually is. Uh, and it, and it, shows, it, it shows the true self when <clears throat> when you when you have that kind of power and i think as far as soldier boy you know he's he's been living with this for uh, a century uh, and has has always been the top dog has always been the alpha i guess he's been sort of sent out to pasture and now he's back and and i like to say that he's you know he's the old lion who's coming back into the cage to mix it up with the new lion but at the same time it's like but I'm the strongest, and it. it <laughs> <laughs> Which he does do in the show. In the show. I do. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's his yeah. voice. That's voice. That's yeah, 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 yeah. It's a like, bold performance yeah. choice, but yeah, he does yeah, it the yeah. whole time. It is. Yeah. But I'm the strongest. Yeah, I remember yeah, seeing yeah, yeah. the first time he did that. I was like, <laughs> so brave, <laughs> so, right. so brave. Right. You never want to fully commit. <laughs> but but I, I, I just tried to. Do my Homelander. Yeah. <laughs> and I truly, I didn't know what to do. It was a great move. Really. No, really. You up. It really threw him. Off, which you know, all, all plays into the power struggle. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he really, you dethroned me in one yeah. second. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm soldier boy. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> that? It's like, and then I was like on the phone to Eric, why did you hire him? Right, right. What right. is he doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Look, look, it was part of the terms of his rehab. 
that he needed a job, and so I had to give him a job. Oh. Yeah, and I had to talk in that voice, and Chase Crawford had to get the <laughs> out of the room. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> One key difference between Homelander and Soldier Boy, Homelander has like a growing disassociative personality disorder. Soldier Boy does not. Soldier Boy is more of like, everything that's awful about toxic masculinity, you know? So like abusive and cruel and ego driven, but he's not like slowly losing his sanity. In terms of the teams, they're awful. They're all awful, awful people. <laughs> and and I think the seven um, are just awful now and, and payback was awful yeah. then. Imagine if there was actually seven. Oh, I know. Well, it's, it's, it's starting to become oh, like a... The five? The we, five. No, the we've, one. We've decided, though... It's a boy band. We, we've gone down. so long now without seven members of the seven that it's now become like a running joke in the room that I want to go to the end of the series <laughs> no, without not. ever <laughs> having seven. Never having had seven. <laughs> seven. There's about like a half of an episode this season where there's seven in the seven. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's just, it's just, uh, I, wanna, I wanna get all the way to the end. It's so good. It's great. Yeah. Those team meetings around the board table. <laughs> yeah, just get smaller and smaller. Never complete. <laughs> yeah, never, ever. It's a little never. bit like this priesthood. <laughs> <laughs> last it's five. Never yeah, yeah, yeah. They're never here. Where is everybody? Yeah, Chase, 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 winning. Go. You would just I roll know. in like <laughs> some 50s rock star. <laughs> Carl's still in his room. <laughs> oh, man. I just, I always feel like it's, <clears throat> it, you know, asking a, a, a favorite episode, it's, for me, it, it feels like one long story mm -hmm. that has, this one particularly, has eight segments to this story. So saying, what's your favorite part of that movie is really kind of the question for, that, that I think of it as. As we start to get into the, the end of the season, things really start to unfold and things really start to, mm -hmm. to, to layer out. And, and that's, for me, when it really starts getting, you know, everything ramps up. You know, funny it, thing is, though, as well, on that, you just made me think, <clears throat> is, is this is one show that I, can, that I can think of where, I mean, if I think of Termite, uh, and what, you know, the beginning of the show even, this is not a show that comes in and goes, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna gently ease everyone mm -hmm. into it. It's like, nope, we're yeah. gonna drop your mid-story, yeah. and you're gonna, we're gonna fill Good in luck. the blanks as we you, go, but. You might say we shove this show right up your urethra. Oh, <laughs> you I mean, might say that. You, you may. <laughs> yeah, we is that shove the sound right up your urethra? Your, that's the headline. <laughs> your urethra. We go deep, get we ready, go deep yeah, into yeah, your yeah, get ready into to be shoved deep into, into your, your urethra. urethra. Boom. Cut it a boom. But honestly, all of them, like, they, each one has something that I'm just so in love with um, and, and an angle that is just really unexpected. And, you know, and I, I mean, the audience will tell us, but I think it's our best season. And, and so it's just, it's, I don't know, it's such a cop out answer, but they're, they're all my children. <laughs> I love yeah, all my I kids mean, equally. But that makes sense that you would feel like that. You sit with it so long, and, and I mean, that's your job. Imagine if you were like, put all my concentration and effort into one episode, <laughs> and then the ones around it suck. Yeah. But, you know, but that one's really good. Yeah. I, that makes perfect sense that you'd feel like that. Personally, I'm really excited for people to see. I, I, think, I, 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 I think it is a strong season, uh, and you're right, the audience will tell us. Probably six, seven, eight. Mm -hmm. For me, the tail end of the season, mm -hmm. which is a little generic as well to, to, to say that because most shows tend to ramp up towards the end of the season. But I actually, if I'm going to be, be specific about it, episode six, I think, you know, there's a swirling around of, you know, we were talking about power, these, um, these different uh, 
powerful people collide and it's, uh, it's, it makes for some great viewing. You know, Jensen can attest, there's been no producer in television history <laughs> more wrong about how long a show should go. <laughs> Like literally, like that's not even, that's not even hyperbole. Like the worst in history at naming how long his show should go. You know, for, I would have, I said in so many interviews, Supernatural should go five years. So many. But I remember um, you said, you were like, oh man, th three would be great. Yeah, 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 three yeah, yeah. Three yeah, seasons would be great, <laughs> but I really want to get to five. Yeah, yeah. If we could just get to five. Home run. Yeah, and so um, I have learned to no longer make those predictions publicly. Uh, so I am so not idiot. putting myself out there again so I can deal with a decade of questions of like, you know, you said it was gonna be five years, and why were you so stupid about that? So like, I, could, I can go without that this time. All right, this was Entertainment Weekly's Around the Table. Make sure you watch The Boys when it premieres on Prime Video June 3rd. Thank <laughs> you.